Welcome to Glitter Couch. I'm Brittany Decker. Remily Sekulatin is behind the camera. And we are here with artist Ken and Gary, or Black Velvet, <laughs> as he's known. Um, we're here at Monroe Street Bridge in Spokane. And we're going to talk to you about your art. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself and like, your hobbies. Some of my hobbies, I actually love going to shows and stuff like that. Love seeing live music. And then I love traveling and stuff like that too. So if I get to do those and travel at the same time, it's kind of nice. Cool. And then also art is my life. So music <laughs> and art. So for those who don't, who aren't familiar with your work, can you just tell us, like give us a little summary of how you would describe it, like the medium and what exactly is it that you make? My medium is kind of all over the place. I kind of have my hand in everything. Um, animation, graphic design, apparel design, um, video, video editing right now, painting and drawing and just everything I can possibly do that's creative. Um, but my style has changed a lot from when I first started doing everything. Before it was more just like glitchy and distortion and now it's kind of a little bit more commercial I guess. So more appealing for everybody as compared to being just appealing for some people. Do you find it easy to go in between commercial like art and more of a fine art? genre or is that difficult to make the it's distinction? difficult to like make the distinction between the two because with studio art i feel like there's a little bit more freedom involved in it and commercial art is something that just like is more appealing but a little bit simple too at the same time mm -hmm. um but once you get in the one it's kind of hard to switch between the two mindsets hmm. so um your photographs they are usually really I mean, the only word for it is glitchy. Yeah. Like, they're very distorted. Can you go through your process and how you choose to distort or how you go about distorting? Oh, that's an interesting process. What's your process in general? So, like, the process of it basically is um, I use more than four pictures for each distortion that I do. Hmm. So, each picture, the final product usually involves five or six different distortions. And it's just me clipping out certain pieces, changing colors, and like making sure everything looks right even though you probably wouldn't notice like what I did to it without layering it on top of each other. But it's a really interesting process. It takes like the eye, I guess, to see like exactly what goes where and everything like that. Hmm. And so the actual distorting, do you just like layer photographs on top of each other or is there like a certain um, technique that you use? It's layering bits and pieces of photographs on top of each other, okay. as well like as changing apart. like the RGB spectrum and everything like that on certain colors too. Um, it's not really layering as much, it's more layering and cutting out and then bringing things through. Okay, interesting. Is there something about distortion as a concept that intrigues you, or is it just purely aesthetic based, or is it...? It's a little bit of both. Um, I like distortion because I don't want to be just like a general photographer where I'm just yeah. basically just like retouching and editing and like what you see is basically what you get. I like having like a little bit more freedom on how my photography turns out. Cool. So you have other work besides photography, obviously. I mean, you were talking about video editing. Is there um, like an overall, what's the right word for it? Like some of your work is very illustrative. Mm -hmm. And so how does that relate to your video work or to your photography? There, is there no relation? <laughs> there's, there's definitely a relation between all of it for the most part. Because I mean, video editing is just something that's slightly different than photography. Mm -hmm. But the only difference is that instead of it being a still picture, it's working with something that's moving in a certain amount of time where it takes a little bit more time and effort and realizing how to edit something like that yeah but then there's my digital art and stuff like that which is completely different from my photography and with that I just basically figure out the color palette that I'm going to use yeah and how clean I want the lines and like basically how I'm going to paint each piece digitally too so you treat your digital art basically as a painting right? yeah oh, cool. um and also a lot of your work has it's a lot of youth culture and a lot of like festival culture. Would you mm -hmm. say that that's because of your hobby is going to concerts and shows? Yeah, that's actually it's why my mainly. art looks like that. Yeah, music and like all that kind of stuff is a big influence in my art for the most part. I mean, there are some artists I follow that do like strictly apparel design or like strictly just photography for like DJs and other bands mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And they've been like a really a big inspiration to me for the most part. Yeah. Are there specific artists that 
you would say inspire your work? Yeah, there's this guy named Hoodbish who does photography and makes his own apparel and stuff like that. And his style is really similar to mine. And I actually just found out who he was like about a month ago. Yeah. And it was weird to see like that connection where it's just like, oh, I didn't know you existed, but our styles are really similar. <laughs> yeah, that's always really cool. Um, so like find out that there's somebody out there who's yeah, doing exactly what you're doing. <laughs> and it's also kind of intimidating. It's like, ooh, do I... <laughs> you don't want to dig too deep because you don't want to like yeah. steal ideas. Yeah, exactly. You have to like limit wanna... yourself and like what you actually see from them before you're like, okay, I, I'm already contaminated. Like I gotta yeah. stay away from this. Um, and you also do work for like clients too, right? Mm -hmm. Is that difficult again to transition from doing work for yourself and for clients, or do you find that it's really easy to? Like fulfill what they need or is it i think it's generally pretty tough for the most part yeah because what a client wants it's hard for them because they're not the artist or anything like that it's hard for them to describe exactly what they want mm -hmm. so i just have to try and like figure out what they're doing or what they want specifically and it's a lot of like going back and forth and tweaking things that like need to be tweaked but like the end product is usually pretty good for the most part but it's more of just like a commonality between two people yeah so we were reading on your website that mm -hmm. or maybe it was on your Facebook, that a lot of your models or, like, the people that you use are your friends. Is mm -hmm. that part of your art, like, having this familiarity, or is it, um... It's me not having money to pay yeah. models. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the real talk. But, I mean, for the most part, my friends are willing to help me out, too. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, since they're my friends and everything like that, they're always down to help me out. So I'm never mm -hmm. just, like, without somebody to shoot. I always have, like, somewhere to go and somewhere to start off, which is pretty nice yeah. for the most part. But I'm trying to branch out right now, now that I'm done with school, and actually like, yeah. try to meet more people, take more pictures of different people, and try to mm -hmm. do things a little bit bigger. Is it easier to work with friends because of familiarity, or is it like actually more difficult because I think it's pretty like expectations of each other I think it's pretty easy for the most part because I know a lot of people who aren't comfortable behind the camera or in front of the yeah. camera for the most part but when it's one of your friends it's a little bit different as well too yeah because some of my friends have modeled before and then other ones just are really uncomfortable in front of the camera but because we're friends it's a little bit different okay um so what are your plans like moving forward with your art is there any direction that you're planning I'm going into like even more commercial or is it like I know that you said you were working on video work mm -hmm. is that more that's the direction? a new thing that I just started working on um I'm actually like editing music videos and stuff together right now oh, nice. and that's kind of the general direction that I want to go but because I don't know really how to do it this is like my foot in the door to get like into the art scene of the yeah. music scene which is kind of where I want to be cool. and your photography is really really great I love looking at it <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that, because your color palette is so, like, I've talked to you about this before, yeah. I think, but, like, it's really unnatural, um, but then you'll mix it with, like, natural colors, and it's really, really nice to look at, because it's, <laughs> like, this juxtaposition that, I don't know, also blends really well together. Yeah. Would you say that your color palette stems from the culture of like festivals and stuff or is it just like it's all kind of it reminds me of, like video games yeah yeah no they're the color palette that i like to use i like to use unnatural colors just to bring out certain color tones that like don't really exist in the image itself mm -hmm. but i've noticed in a lot of my work my defaults are like teal and pink and yeah. i don't know how that ends up being that every single time but for some reason like that's just the default color yeah i, don't, I accidentally use pink a lot even though I hate pink. <laughs> See, I'm not... It's like, I kind of like it for the most part. But I don't know why I just default to it. I'm like, you know what? This needs pink even when it's like all black. I'm like, you know yeah. what? A little bit of pink. You're a very concise person. I don't know how to drag out stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, Are you working on any big projects currently? I'm working on editing a music video right now. Yeah. And then I actually just won a contest that I placed fourth in. And oh, so nice. this week I actually get an artist spotlight and get t-shirts made of one of my prints. Nice. What contest was it? I don't know. This company reached out to me through Instagram oh, and like cool. wanted my stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I, I guess I can enter in. And they're like, by the way, you got fourth place. Like you get an artist <laughs> spotlight for April 5th. So on Wednesday, they're going to be sending out an email and then I'll get like the link to the website to buy my shirts and stuff. Oh, nice. So I'm pretty excited. That's really cool. Yeah. And you have like a pseudonym that you go under, which is Black Velvet, which mm -hmm. you mentioned at the start. 
where did that come from? That's actually a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> so that was actually a nickname that my friends gave me in high school. And yeah. that's like when I first like started drinking and stuff like that too. And like, I had a fake ID, whatever. But um, we just to only drink just like Holly Rossi and Black Velvet. And <laughs> my friends actually started calling me that name without me knowing for months. Oh, so they no. actually said it to me once and I had like no idea what that even was. I'm like, who's that? They're like, that's you. Have you ever heard that name before? And I'm like, no, I've never heard it before. And one of my friends goes, we've been calling you that for like four or five months now. I'm like, this is the first <laughs> no. time I've heard of it. So that was a nickname that they gave me and it just kind of stuck. That's cool. That's cool that you like just took it on. And well, it's like one of those things too, where you can't like choose your own nickname. You got to like, let yeah. it kind of just happen. And because I didn't choose it at all, like it kind of just works for me. And it's just, I don't know. Yeah. I've grown into it a little bit. I love it. I think it's so cool that you have like this cool like, alter ego <laughs> yeah. name it's, for your work. It's definitely like an alter ego name. Yeah. Cause I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I don't like putting my personal name on any of the art I create. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not really about me. It's more about my art and what I create. Yeah. Like, at some point, I would like to create, like, a character, kind of like the gorillas or whatever, for in my art. Yeah. And have, like, that be the persona of it. But that's something I'm going to have to, like, look into, like, I don't know what it's called. Character modeling? I don't know. Character design? Know something like that? I've never looked into it. But that's something that, like, I'd like to look into and at least kind of start doing that. Yeah. That would be really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if there could just be, like... And then you could market yourself, even with, like, little stickers with, like, this yeah. cartoon of you on it. Because that's one thing I still need to work on, too, is just making stickers and stuff like that too because yeah i'm not big or anything like that so i can't just like put my name on stickers or anything like that mm -hmm. i need to have like more just simple designs and everything like that that i can like hand out a little bit yeah so. yeah and you do a lot of like i mean i call it like marketing and branding through social media i don't know a better word for it um is that where you I don't know, I guess, I don't really know what I'm going to ask, like, is social media where you find it best to share your art? Like, is that the platform that you enjoy sharing your art more? Is there, like... I actually, I love and hate it, because yeah. I love how easy it is, like, to get everything out there for the most part. Yeah, for sure. But at a certain point, it is hard to push back, or push out so much stuff to so many different people. Like, Instagram is great, but I mean, I use other ones as well, too, that aren't nearly as great. Like, mm -hmm. there's one website I use called 500px, and that's a photography website. And I don't get, like, as many responses off of that than I do on Instagram. Hmm. And then even through Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that, too, it's all very different. But the only thing that I wish there was is I wish there was, like, a different social network that was kind of like Instagram, but more art-related than just everything. Because that's where things kind of get lost. Yeah. Well, there is... Um... Yeah. Behance? Yeah, Behance is still yeah. hard to work with, though. Oh, is it? I've never tried it. Because, I mean, even, like, with one of my shops that I have on Society6, it's still hard, like, to push your stuff forward. Yeah. Because you just kind of have to, like, wait and let it grow or, like, be constantly updating stuff. Yeah. And it, it, I don't know. That's just, like, Instagram, too. It's tough, but you got to, like, keep on putting stuff up on there to yeah. do really well. And that's the hardest thing to do, too, because there's this other guy I follow on Instagram who has been putting up, I don't know if it's, like, a digital piece or a drawing every day for a whole year. Is that people? Uh, um, I don't know his I name. Follow the same person. He like makes like these like weird like futuristic like robot kind of drawings or whatever. Maybe. But like he'll label the day. He'll be like person. day like two ninety something out of like three sixty five, and it's like, damn, dude, you've been cranking <laughs> these out. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to. I don't know how they come up with so much. Like every single day to be that dedicated. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, they're definitely, like, putting their time and effort into it. Because especially yeah. if they're creating something like that and, like, putting it out for everyone to see. It's like, yeah, by the way, like, this is all I've done today so far. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're making a lot of work. Yeah, I'm you... trying to do my best. Yeah. Because, I mean, I get, like, three days off from work. So those days off are just days where I actually just, like, focus on my work and not strictly that. Yeah. I've always been impressed with, like, how much, like, the quantity of work that you put out because... I'm sitting here, like, working forever on one piece, and then I'll, like, check Instagram, and you'll have, like, five new pieces out. No, it's weird, because I actually, like, I don't know if I'm good at marketing or anything like that, but I, like, do my research and, like, try to see what yeah. the best times to post are, how, and then I'll go, like, a week or two, I'll be like, okay, I haven't done anything in a week or two, like, let's make up for that week or two I didn't do anything. Yeah. I'm like, let's crank out all this stuff right now to make up for what I've missed out on. Yeah. I mean, it's good practice to get into. It is. 
<laughs> Thanks so much for joining us on our glitter couch to talk more about your work. Um, if you want to check out Kenan's work, you can go check out his Instagram or your website at blck underscore velvet. Velvet. And the website's just blckvelvet.com. Yeah. Uh, I'm Brittany Decker. We're going to leave the Colton is behind the camera. Thanks for watching. Ha <laughs> ha.